Hello, everybody. Welcome to the class. It's a pleasure to be with you tonight. So just a few tonight, maybe the rest of the people that are watching the game. Argentina versus Brazil, I guess. <laughs> I hope they can come. So let me then just check, and then we're going to start with the um, class of tonight. Okay, and uh, well, first of all, we're going to check the attendance. Aida Isabel López Bonilla Ana Verónica Hernández Rodríguez Present Good Blanca Isabel Tunaca de Rodríguez Ernesto José Andrade Medina Jonathan Ariel Figueroa Rivera Present Good José Alfredo Hueso López. Juan Roberto Velázquez Romero. Present. Good. María Julia Ramos Olivar. Present. Good. Mónica Wendy Ábalos Girón. Oscar Mauricio Rivera González. Oscar René Molina Calidonio. Present teacher. Good. Oseas Figueroa Cisneros. Present. Good. Ramiro Rafael Aguilar Díaz. Roberto Carlos Avilés Rivera. Sandra Yanira Gómez Romero. Present, Sil teacher. Thank you. Silvia Patricia Aceituno Méndez. Present, teacher. Nice. And Verónica Elizabeth Burgos Rivas. Good. Perfect. So, let's check here. Okay, we're going to start the class. And uh, also remember, as I was telling you before, that we uh, need to move on with the platform, right? So, we need to finish this incoming weekend. So, it's very important for you to move on. If you have questions, let me know. Also, I uh, remind you to, we are going to do the the survey from Insaform next Monday, that is the last day of class. All right, so we're going to start with a little video about inventory. So as usual, you are going to check the video and then uh, comment about that one. So here we go. How much, inventory should... How much inventory should I hold? One of the principles of supply of goods to a market is that companies hold enough stock to satisfy customer demand without holding too much. So intuitively, just the right quantities of stock to satisfy demand will minimise cost. However, when dealing with thousands of stock keeping units, the art of balancing demand with supply is intricate. It becomes even more complex when multiple storage facilities are used and customer service times are short or vary according to the critical nature of products. The best way to understand how much stock you should have is to determine how much it costs you. As a guide, inventory costs vary from 2.4 to 16% of sales revenue. You might like to check your costs before embarking on a cost reduction exercise. In your endeavour to reduce costs, it's important to understand what are the typical costs involved. Well, here are the areas that you should examine. Facility costs. These are holding costs which include rental, mobile and static equipment, utilities and compliance costs. For example, for dangerous goods or pharmaceutical products. Human capital. This is the cost of labour to manage stock. For example, moving it, handling it and counting it. Finance costs. When capital is invested in inventory, the cost of finance is interest, or the lost opportunity of vesting capital elsewhere. Management costs. These are white collar personnel and information technology charges. Procurement costs. These relate to the cost of purchasing, including inbound transport. Inventory turnover. As a rule of thumb, the faster the stock turns over, the less it will cost you to hold. However, stock turns in some businesses, such as spare parts, will be very low. 
say one to three times per annum. Whereas stock turns in a fast moving consumer goods business can be as high as 20 to 30 times per annum. Regardless, increasing stock turns for any business to an optimal level is beneficial. <sighs> stock accuracy. If stock records are wrong, vast amounts of time and expense can be wasted sorting them out. Ideally, stock accuracy should be 98% or better. This means that 98 times out of 100, the stock on system actually matches the stock in the storage bin. Lower percentages are always linked to higher operating costs. Pillage and ullage. Unfortunately, theft occurs, as does unexplained stock losses and damage. The cost of these must be factored into your analysis. Service levels. Too rigid or a single service level approach can cost dearly. Companies that will offer goods supplied anywhere, anytime, in any quantity, at the fastest delivery time possible, will have higher level of, levels of stock than those who offer a service level specifically tailored to customer needs. So in all of this, what is the solution? Know thy customer service levels well. And note, levels are plural. Smart companies segment their supply to three service classes. Critical goods. These are products that are needed quickly such as for medical or emergency. Non-critical goods. These are products needed within a reasonable time frame, but are not necessarily urgent, such as computers, household white goods, and building materials. Scheduled delivery. These are goods which can be built or customised for particular customers and delivered according to agreed delivery times. This applies to some technology products and also furniture. Brilliant. A further delineation may be made between retail, wholesale or end-user customers. In any case, it pays to start with a good understanding of customer needs before advancing to the next stage. Now that you know the inventory cost drivers, what are some of the strategies that can be used to better manage inventory? Here are just a couple. Firstly, vendor managed inventory. Some companies involved in manufacturing integration or assembly rely on their vendors to manage their own stock until the goods are actually used on the production line. Under this arrangement, the manufacturer doesn't have to carry any stock and only pays for the stock when used. This strategy can save the manufacturer money, but can consequently load certain costs upon vendors. This apparent misalignment of costs between manufacturer and the supplier is beneficial to end customers as the total cost to supply in fact becomes lower. Another strategy is postponement logistics. This is common to many international manufacturers and is the process of postponing finals, final assembly of goods until demanded in the offshore market where they will be sold. This enables efficient storage of a smaller range of goods while offering a fast response time to the designated market. It has been used in the fashion industry to good effect and also in industries such as appliances, computers and a gaming. With a large number of companies moving manufacturing offshore to South and Northeast Asia, postponement is becoming more common and feasible for smaller markets such as Australia. So from what I have covered in this session you will be aware that inventory management is a challenging and inexact science, which should be approached carefully to ensure full understanding and application of the most appropriate supply chain strategy. I wish you every success as you scrutinise this important aspect of your business. Well, it's interesting. Okay, what did you get from the video? Interesting for the, the determinant of the cost. The cost is, is very much variable in determinate uh, the cost. I understand for the company is tell me, tell me cost.
for the shipping in the containers, uh, both in the in the United States and the the Sweden is determinate a uh, real cost is difficult. It's very much bar variable. That is true. So yeah, to determine the costs, pricing, I mean, in inventory, something very, very difficult. Uh, we say an example for that, for example, restaurants, to determine the inventory of food, vegetables, beans, I don't know, many other things. It's very difficult, right? And and another company is uh, is Apro. ¿Cómo se aprovechar si Apro? Take advantage. Take advantage mm -hmm. for the for the situation. And in last years, and and one company. Uh, uh, Account, account the eleven, eleven hundred is on the mid, see Yeah, no, eleven hundred dollars. Eleven thousand. Eleven thousand. In another company, uh, six hundred, six thousand. Is difference is the half to half, <laughs> half. Casi la mitad de lo que cobraba otra compañía. And, for example, and, and three, three corporate, corporate, and three companies is, is very, very different for the yes. quality service and rename for the, of the company reputations yeah uh, everything has an impact and uh, this is one of the most difficult things definitely it's, it's not easy it's not easy uh, even if you have a very nice team that is going to dedicate to that one uh, there are many variables that can affect that so definitely something very difficult good any other comment for the video Okay, so today we're going to check about inventory management, something that we started yesterday. And these are four tips for effective inventory management. Uh, so it says, inventory management is a pain point that plagues many retailers. Without an effective strategy, companies can make critical mistakes, tie up capital in excess inventory, create picking errors in the warehouse, and even miss sales opportunities due to out-of-stock products. Here are four tips to help retailers develop an inventory plan that works. So let's check some words here. What is pain point? Anybody knows? Mm. Okay, a pain point is something that is difficult. It's one thing that is difficult to, to solve. So that would be a pain point. A plaque, what is a plaque? Plagas. Very good. That is it. Uh, then it says tied up. What is tied up? Okay, tied up uh, is algo así como amarrarse. Tied up. Uh, let's see. Como atar. Atar. Exactly. Very good. What is out of stock?
Ok, out of stock es cuando hay algo que no está en inventario. No lo tenemos en inventario. No hay. So, let's see. And that's all right. So, mm -hmm. let's check. The first one says, make a plan and then execute. So, uh, this is the paragraph and it's going to be for, let's see. Hey, Ana Hernandez, please help me with this. Yeah. Okay, teacher. Okay. Inventory management is a continuous, concentrated effort and a process that shouldn't be handled solely. So like at the operation level, uh, solely, solely at the operation level, a successful inventory plan should also involve your marketing, catalog, e-commerce, and merchandising departments. By manage, managing your inventory against a master promotional calendar, everyone wins. Your purchasing team understands when how much product to buy. Your fulfillment provider knows when to prepare additional warehouse space and your contact center staff can anticipate increases call volume. Uh, at previous year's sales forecast, forecast to your inventory calendar to be even more prepared for sensational spikes in the demand. Very good, perfect, thank you. So the first one makes sense, right? Make a plan and then execute. So well, first of all, we need to check about the needs that we have and then uh, what is the plan that we're going to follow. And then of course, execute. What is execute, anybody knows? Ejecutar. Ejecutar, very good. And then it says a concentrated effort. What is that? Concentrar esfuerzos. Okay, yes. very good. And it says shouldn't be handled so lightly. What is so lightly? Eh, solamente. Solitariamente. Very good. So, and this is very interesting, Mike. A successful inventory plan should also involve your marketing, catalog, e-commerce, and merchandising department. So, it's not something that you do uh, separate. You need to involve all the other uh, departments so they provide uh, like uh, their insights and the plan works for all the company, not only for uh, the warehouse. So that is very important. By managing your inventory against, uh, do you remember what is against? Not again, but against. En contra. En contra. Very good. A master promotional calendar. Everyone wins. Your purchasing team understands when and how much product to buy. Your fulfillment provider knows uh, when to prepare additional warehouse space. And your contact center staff can anticipate increase of call volume. Add previous year sales forecast. Do you remember what is a forecast? Pronósticos. Very good, pronostico. To your inventory calendar to be even more prepared for seasonal spikes in demand. What is spike? Spikes. Okay. Spike es como un, digamos, está viendo un gráfico. Un uh, spike pico. es un, ajá, un pico que sube, algo que, que se sale de lo normal. Y por eso dice seasonal spikes, porque, por ejemplo, para Black Friday, uh, sometimes companies, they sell a lot. And it is, it is not normal, so it's more than needed. So uh, that's why we speak about seasonal spikes. Uh, do you have any questions here on this one? Ooh, okay. For, for guys. The other one says use the pronunciation forecast, this teacher. Forecast. For, yeah. Forecast. Forecasts. Okay. Thank you. Good. So the next one says use 
multiple vendors. Maria, Julia, could you please help me reading that? Okay. Use <clears throat> multiple vendors. Inventory management also mean vendor man management. If you is if you have high selling item that difficult to keep in 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 stock or or are planning a, a promotion oh. that will signific significantly increasing demand. It often makes sense to commission as a second vendor for the product has a backup plan. plan. This help pre prevent long, long, long lead time and out of stock when issue issue are, are, arise with arise. The, arise with the primary vendor primary. primary vendor or inventory doesn't arrive at the warehouse at, at all. Very good. So this is a very, very nice piece of advice. Use multiple vendors, not only one supplier. So you have to have the principal one, the second one, and maybe a third one. Just in case something happened, uh, you will always have supplies. For this. So it says uh, inventory management also means vendor management. If you have a high selling item, what is high selling item? Eh, como, eh... Digamos, un alto en ventas en un ítem o en un producto, no sé. Very good. Un ítem alto en ventas. Something that is very popular. Selling a lot. That's difficult to keep in stock. Or are planning a promotion that will significantly increase demand. It often makes sense to commission a second vendor for a product as a backup plan. What is backup? Eh, Como, como, atra, como respaldo. Respaldo. Ah. Very good. So there is a backup plan. So this helps prevent long lead times and out of stocks when issues arise. Do you remember what is issues? Como asunto. No. Asunto. Pro pro problem problema. Very good. Problema. And what is arise? Surgir. Surgir, very good. So with the primary vendor or inventory, it doesn't arrive at the warehouse at all. So uh, what it says is that we need to be uh, ready with a backup vendor or backup supplier. So in case something happened to the principal one, we still have options. So we can continue producing and not stop because stop is not good. Good. Then it says consistent, constant communication. Um, let's see. Ramiro, could you please help me with that? Consistent, constant communication. A good relationship with your vendors is crucial to our your company's success, especially if you outsource any part or uh, of your retail operation. Your fulfillment provider becomes your brand in the eyes of the customers. So it's important that they understand your plans for your inventory as well as you do. Follow, teacher? Yes, please. Okay. This means constant communication of your promotional plans, product information, and upcoming releases. Every retail wants a flexibly trusted fulfillment provider, but a retailer should also be flexible and trusting in order to make the relationship work seamlessly. Seamlessly. All right, very good, perfect. So, I believe this is good uh, for everybody, for every department, for every piece of uh, information for every uh, company. So consistent, constant communication. Definitely communication is 
is something that is very, very important. So it says a good relationship with your vendors is crucial to your company's success, especially if you if you outsource any part of your retail operation. So remember the warehouse can be linked to three, three PLs, right? So definitely something that we can handle. Your fulfillment provider becomes your brand in the eyes of the customer. Do you remember what is brand? Marca. Very good. Yes, Marca. So it's important that they understand your plans for your inventory as well as you. This means constant communication of your promotional plans, product information, and upcoming releases. What is upcoming? Que surgen o que vienen. Que vienen, very good. And releases, what is release? Relaciones. That release. is actually liberal, no? Liberal. Okay, so for example, when you are going to release the latest iPhone 12 or something like that. So it says every retailer wants a flexible, trusted fulfillment provider. But a retailer should also be flexible and trusting in order to make the relationship work seamlessly. What is seamlessly? Sin problemas. Very good. That is it. So this uh, communication part is not only from you to the provider, but also from the provider to you. It's in both ways, right? So that works properly. Uh, okay, do you have any question on that, on that part? Good. So the last one, it says, create compliance policies. That is also very important. Uh, let's see, let's read this. Mauricio Rivera, is it possible for you to read? Okay. Um, Oseas. Okay. <clears throat> Create compliance policies. Standard operating procedures are critical to making your day-to-day -day warehouse operations a uniform process. Develop policies that vendors, merchandisers, and fulfillment staff adhere to. That way, your products will be shipped, received, stocked, and picked efficiently and accurately without upsetting your inventory count. This can include shipping guides, products, specification sheets, packaging and stock instructions, billing guidelines, and so on. For example, if you sell a product in packages of five, it's critical to let your order fulfillment providers who receiving stuff know so they don't spend precious time breaking down the items into individual units, only to have the pick and pack stuff rekit the items before shipping. When you have guidelines in place, you can assure the, uh, that your inventory management system is reflecting the most of the day information and can react with confidence. Very good, perfect, thank you. So uh, yes, you need to create policies as well. So uh, compliance policies means that uh, there are some steps, some things, some procedures that needs to be compliant, that needs to be done. So everything works properly. And it says standard operating procedures are critical to uh, making your day-to-day -day warehouse operations a uh, uniform process. What is day-to-day? Day? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, very good. And then it says, develop policies that vendors, merchandisers, and fulfillment staff adhere to. Uh, what is develop? Do you remember? Desarrollo. Desarrollar. Very good. Desarrollar políticas. Very good. Vendors, merchandisers. What is merchandisers? Mercaderías. 
mercaderes. Yeah. Uh, Staff of the two. That way your products will be shipped, the seal, stuffed and picked efficiently and accurately without upsetting. What is upset? Molestia. Okay. Molestia. Very good. Molestar. Uh, your inventory count. This can include shipping guides, product specification sheets, packaging and stock instructions, billing guidelines, and so on. So, uh, what is guidelines? Guias. Guias. Very good. And there is an example that says, for example, if you sell a product in packages of five, it's critical to let your order fulfillment providers receiving staff know so they don't spend precious time breaking down the items into individual units, only to help the pick up pack staff rekey the item before shipping. Uh, when you have guidelines in place, you can assure what is assured. Okay, asegurarse. That your inventory management system is reflecting the most up-to-date information and can react with confidence. What is up-to-date? Actualizado. Very good, perfect. So, these are the four tips that this article is showing us in today's. Very interesting, very good. Okay, and uh, let's check this other one that we have here. 23 ways to improve your inventory management. So we're not going to read the introduction, but let's go to the other part. Well, actually it's not here. Huh. So it's another thing. Uh, I guess you need to do something else. Uh, yeah. Hmm. I don't know if it's complete here. Okay, but let's just give it a shot, okay? So, in the section one, it says, what is a warehouse optimization assessment or study? What is assessment? Do you remember what is that? Evaluation. Evaluation, very good. So, the first part is uh, warehouse optimization assessment or study. Let's see who's going to read this introduction or what. Veronica, could you please help me within that? Okay, uh, the first one, a warehouse optimization. optimization. Yes, please. Okay. A warehouse optimization study is a disciplined and comprehensive approach to analyzing all facets of the operations. What uniqueness exists across uniqueness. companies? Units. What uniqueness exists across companies? An assessment is typically going to cover all functional areas from receiving through, through shipping. Additionally, optimization studies cover the warehouse layout. layout. Well, layout and design as well as all inventory management functions. The goals are straightforward. You must be identifying those areas which are inefficient and dry up labor cost. Consider those processes and bottlenecks that do allow you meet your management expectation or customer needs. The output of the assessments should be the basis for developing a roadmap for improving the operation over time. Very good, perfect, thank you. A lot of new words here, nice. So it says, a warehouse optimization study is a disciplined and comprehensive approach to analyzing all facets of the organization. Uh, optimization, what is that? 
Optimización. Very good. And you know what it's so uh, approach as well. I believe we don't have more. Well, uniqueness, the pronunciation here is uniqueness. Exist across companies and assessment is typically going to cover all functional areas from receiving through shipping. So what is uniqueness? Unicidad. Unicidad, algo único. Okay. And then it says, additionally, optimization studies cover the warehouse layout. What is layout? Es el plano de distribución. Very good. Exactly. That is it. That is the layout. And design as well as all invention and management functions. The goals are straightforward. What is straightforward? Como tenso, no sé. No. Mm, uh, uh, de hecho, acá viene a significar algo como claro. Son claras. Straightforward. So, son directas. Something like that. You must be ah, identified. Yeah. You must be identifying those areas which are in inefficient and drive up labor costs. Uh, let's see. Consider those processes and bottlenecks. Do you remember what is bottlenecks? Cuello de botella. Cuello de botella. Very good. What do not allow you to meet your management's expectations or customers' needs. The outputs of the assessments. What is output? La output es como salida de un proceso, o sea, que viene a ser como el resultado. Of the assessment should be the basis for developing a roadmap. What is roadmap? Roadmap. Es como un mapa vial. Mapa, mapa de calles. Un mapeo, ¿verdad? que te dice un camino hacia dónde vamos. So that will be. For improving the operations over time. Nice. So, how to optimize warehouse operations? Juan, could you please help me reading this? Okay. Um, how, how to optimize warehouse operations? A methodical optimization assessment should take the following aspects into account. The product and order flow through the operations and supply chains. The overall utilization of the facility and storage locations. Material handling equipment automat automation and storage are utilized utilize, utilize in the facility the product slowing location profiles and management of Bing location. A value added services, BAS, such as kitting, labeling, repackaging, at etc. Vendor compliance programs for inbound goods, the warehouse management software utilized in the operations, the inbound and outbound docks and the station space required, the organizational structure for the operations, and the benchmarking and metrics are utilized uh, to manage the operations. Very good, perfect. So let's check it out. I believe that these are very punctual. So, and uh, if you follow these steps, you will be able to optimize in general the warehouse. So, and uh, check. It says a methodical optimization assessment should take the following aspects into account. The product and order flow through the operations and supply chains. What is flow? Flujo, flujo. Flujo, very good, very good. Okay. The other one is... Uh, the overall utilization of the facility and storage location. Overall, what is overall? Uh, 
general? En general, no. Sí, en, en general. The other one says material handling equipment automation and stores are utilized in the facility. The product slotting. Do you know what is slotting? Okay, slotting is when you put in slots the product. Lo, lo pones separado, separar. Something like that. Location profiles and management of pin locations. Uh, pin locations refers to uh, where you are going to separate everything in different locations. So those are pin, when you put inside things. And then we have value added such as kidding. Do you know what is kidding? Okay, kidding es como ensamblaje. Eh, labeling, what is labeling? Etiquetar. Very good. Repackaging, what is repackaging? Reempacar. Very good. And then it says vendor compliance forms for inbound goods. Nice, I believe that is clear. The warehouse management software utilized in the operations. The inbound and outbound docks and the staging space required. Uh, do you remember what is docks? Muelle de distribución. Very good. And the staging space required. Staging, staging is like in different, when you are going to package or unpackage something, you have different stages. Uh, so to distribute, the materials, let's say. So that refers to that one. And then the organizational structure for the operations. Benchmarking and metrics are utilized to manage the operations. Do you know what is benchmarking? Eso es comparar en, entre otras, entre varias marcas. Perfect, that is benchmarking. When you compare different companies, different brands, different products from different companies. So uh, something very important. Nice. Section two says when to consider a warehouse optimization assessment. So look at that right now, we're checking only the assessment. So not the optimization. Let's see who's gonna be. Um, Oscar Rene, can you please help me within this part? Okay. Successful operation have a mindset, mindset, mindset of continual oper operational improvement, improvement, this, improvement. This keep problem from slowly a uh, building to the point where the operation can no low, lower, longer, longer be efficient of service the customers. There are circumstances where business should look the at operation holistically. 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 On a larger scale. <clears throat> the circumstances generally include the following. Declining in inventory Accuracy changes in the four well inventory accuracy or being level accuracy are strong indicators of a uh, breakdown is processes. Fail, failure to meet customer expectations. There's failures, failures Failures. Failures. Then to stem from other. A currency issue for packaging. Packaging. Order. Turnaround. Time, etc. 
acquiring 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 a new business a new acquisition 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 generally means a create involved increased increased inbound 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 shipment more picking volumes and additional SKU SKUs SKUs within the final year of the lease this towards the the end of the lease is the is then you want the analyze the operation and determine if the existing facility will continue to support your business <clears throat> addition of the product lines with the products client and sq use common potentially new warehouse like light layout optimization and system needs at the end of the season the end of the of a season is the perfect time to stay back and look at home how the operation performed overall escalating escalating fulfillment cost this is another indicator that that point to a breakdown is process processes or ineff inefficient labor that should be evaluate very good nay nice. so let's check it out it says when to consider a warehouse optimization assessment so it says successful operations have a mindset do you know what is a mindset no mindset como mentalizar mentalizar very good the mentalization of continual operational improvements. Do you remember what is improvement? Mejoramiento. Mejoramiento. Very good. Mejorar. This keeps problems from slowly building to the point where the operations can no longer be efficient or service the customer. There are circumstances where businesses should look at operations holistically. Do you know what is holistic? Okay, this in Spanish is holístico. So the question is if you know what is that. <laughs> algo holístico es algo que está interconectado con muchas cosas, pero se ve como todo. So, algo así es holístico. In Spanish, no use teacher. <laughs> yeah, we don't use that in Spanish. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's en la Miss Universo no mencionaron esa palabra. <laughs> es, bien, es bien elevada. Sí, sí. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not a common word. Donde está compartiendo con, con Johnny Walker, no use it. Yeah. Este. Yeah, that's the... <laughs> All right. So, uh, on a larger scale. Uh, these circumstances generally include the following. Decline in inventory accuracy. Uh, definitely, this is something that we need to consider, right? Changes in the four wall inventory accuracy or bin level accuracy are strong indicators of a breakdown in process. Do you know what is breakdown? Descomponer. Descomponer, algo mm -hmm. que no funciona, something that is broken. Good. Uh, failure to meet customer expectations, definitely. This is something that can cause lots of problems. These failures tend to stem. Uh, what is stem? Anybody knows? Una piedra, dice. 
<risa> eh, frenar, en este caso es como ver, frenar, to stand. La, la, la inteligencia artificial no funciona, dijo Roberto. <risa> ok. Yeah, there are many, many ways of translate sometimes something. Yes. So this, uh, well, is, what is failure? Do you know what is failure? Fallas. Fallas, very good. From order accuracy issues. Poor packaging, order turnaround. What is turnaround? Turnaround. Retornar. Retornar el tiempo. Uh, uh, yeah, something like retornar. Recordemos que siempre es un turnaround de, de gente que está un ciclo, es como un ciclo que va terminando y se va a poner. All right. The, no, uh, the other one says acquire. What is acquire? Adquirir. O adquiriendo. Adquirir. Very good. Adquirir. Acquiring a new business. A new acquisition. Ah, this is interesting. What is acquisition? Adquisición. Adquisición. So, this is a noun and this is a verb. That is the difference. A uh, new acquisition generally means increased inbound shipments, more picking volumes, and additional SKUs. What is SKUs? Do you remember that? We checked that already. Es el código de identificación de un producto. Código de identificación. It viene a significar stock keeping units. So, that is the meaning of that. Uh, then it says within. What is within? Do you remember that? Dentro. Dentro. Very good. It could be so. Dentro. Alrededor de. Dentro. Uh, within the final years of lease. What is lease? Arrendamiento. Arrendamiento. Very good. So when you have a warehouse and you are about to to finish that definitely is going to cause an impact right uh towards do you know what is towards mm. hacia hacia de hecho es una proposición de movimiento hacia towards very good Towards the end of a list is when you want to analyze the operations and determine if the existing facility will continue to support your business. What is facility? Instalaciones o construcción. Very good, perfect, nice, that is it. And then it says addition of new product lines. When the new product lines is used come potentially new warehouse layout optimization and system needs. So, yeah, when you are going to produce another product, a new one, definitely is going to cause it. At the end of a season, of course. The end of a season is the perfect time to keep back and look at how operations performed overall. What is performed? Perform. 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 Okay. Ejecutar, cuando se ejecuta un plan, something like that. Overall, escalating fulfillment costs. This is another indicator that points to a breakdown in processes or in efficient labor that should be evaluated. So, definitely. So, if the costs are not what we expect to be done, uh, of course, that is going to cause uh, impact on this. Good. So it says reasons to perform a warehouse optimization study. Okay, we're going to put this into different. So the first three paragraphs are going to be for, let's see. Uh, Roberto Carlos, is it possible for you? Not possible. Uh, Blanca. Yes. Okay. With, with businesses behind more competitive, the need to continually improve the operation becomes more critical. A warehouse optimization assessment is a supply chain management 
that will help to identify areas that should be improved. Faster order to narrow, to narrow and accuracy. 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 Many consumer businesses are driving towards the the latest order latest latest order put of times available with parcel couriers careers careers for business to business channels the the demand is equally as stringent for many companies, the windows for receiving and for fulfilling customers' orders has decreased to strongly, strongly 30 to 90 minutes. An optimization assessment will identify areas where companies can become more nimble Nimble. Nimble. Nimble in processing orders by identifying excessive touch points and both and next. Bugs. Very good. Perfect. Thank you. So this is an introduction, right? With businesses being more competitive, the need to continually improve the operations becomes more critical, of course. A warehouse optimity, uh, optimization assessment is supply chain uh, management tool that will help you to identify areas that should be improved. Faster order turnaround and accuracy. Many consumer businesses are driving towards the latest order cutoff. Oh, this is one. What is cutoff? Okay, cut off is corte. Cuando se reduce algo, se corta. Let's say. Good. Yeah. Uh, and then it says times available with parcel careers. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. for business to business channels, the demand is equally as stringent. What is stringent? Estricto. Estricto, severo. Very good. Perfect. Okay, then it says. For many companies, the window for receiving and fulfilling customers' order has decreased roughly to roughly. What is roughly? Uh, roughly is como, uh, how can I say that? Decrease to roughly till it's around. Um, puede ser algo así como uh, cuando llega algo, bien llega algo a este número. Dice. Decimos algo así. Uh, something like that. Very good. So roughly. And then it says uh, an optimization assessment will identify areas where companies can become more nimble. Ah, what is nimble? Nimble. It's ágil. Ágil, very good. In processing orders by identifying excessive touch points and bottlenecks. What is touch point? Excessive. Un touch point es donde usted tiene que llegar y uh, revisar algo. Hablar con alguien, hacer algún proceso. So, un touch point es donde usted tiene que parar si le revisan que algo esté correcto o algo por el estilo. That is a touch point. So, too many touch points is not good. A few is nice. Uh, let's go to the next two paragraphs. Uh, Monica Avalos, is it possible for you? Yes, este, order must be fulfilled on time and a um, what is the pronunci pronunciation accurately 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 
and the cost of picking errors and the impact of on customers must be factored into the process. Assessment also identify warehouse optimization techniques, material handling equipment or autom automation to support the order fulfillment process. ERP and WMS utilization and capat what is the pronunciation? Uh, capabilities. Capabilities and optimization study will help identify apps within the current ERP or WMS software. These gaps generally prevent a company from effic efficiently processing customer orders. Once the gaps are identified, decisions can be made uh, on where and how to improve these systems. Very good, perfect. So it says orders must be fulfilled on time and accurately. We know that, one, right? So it has to be that way. The cost of picking errors and the impact of customers must be factored into the process, definitely. Assessments also identify warehouse optimization techniques, material handling equipment or automation to support the order for the new process. No any words here. ERP and WMS utilization and capabilities. An optimization study will help identify gaps. What is gap? So, el salto. Un salto como una separación, un abismo. Within the current ERP or WMS software. Uh, these gaps generally prevent a company from efficiently processing customer orders. Once the gaps are identified, decisions can be made on where and how to improve these systems. Nice, very, very good. And let's check the other two. So two ones. Jonathan, is it possible for you? Yes, teacher. Okay, go ahead. Um, improve inventory accuracy. Inventory accuracy tends to be one of the major challenge within supply chains. At times, this can be for wall inventory that is posing challenge. For others, the beam level accuracy becomes the problem even though the four wall inventory is correct. Uh, please, then we continue. Yeah. Okay. Warehouse optimization assessment will identify areas areas for improved cycle counting programs. However, cycle counts only clean up and correct problems once they occur. Uh, a thorough, thorough. thorough assessment will identify the root causes for how and why inventory accuracy problems arise and effects of human error. 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 Good, perfect. So improve inventory accuracy. Inventory accuracy tends. What is tends? Do you remember? Tiende. Tiende, very good. Tends to be one of the major challenges within supply chains, definitely. At times, this can be the four wall inventory that is posing challenges. For others, the beam level accuracy becomes a problem, even though. Uh, what is even though? Do you remember? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, for one inventory is correct. Then it says warehouse optimization assessment will identify 
areas for improved cycle counting problems. However, cycle, uh, cycle counts only clean up and correct problems once they occur. A third of assessment, what is third of? Exacto, exacto. Mm. Actually, third of is complete. Una, un, una evaluación completa. A third of assessment. We'll identify the root causes. What is root? Rutas y causas. La raíz. Las causas raíces. Very good. For how and why inventory accuracy problems arise and effects of human error. Nice. Next two parallels. Before. Sandra Gomez, is it possible for you? Yes, teacher. Okay. Okay. 100 new skills or lines of business. Operations are continually evolving. This include, include new skills and product like that are adapted over time. To acquisition, acquisition. Acquisitions. Yes, Acquisition. Okay. Thus are mal and consolidated in the, the exciting distribution supply chain. Warehouse is larry. Optimization is critical for an expanding skill bus. This situation requires operation to be flexible and scalable to support the chain over time. A warehouse optimization assessment will allow companies to determine various ways to support the exciting and future skills. Excuse, I, I know pronunciation. Excuse, okay. Very good, perfect, thank you. So. Handle new skills or lines of businesses operations are continually evolving. What is evolving? Evolutionar. This includes new skills and product lines that are added over time. The acquisitions that are made and consolidated into the existing Distribution supply chains. A warehouse loading optimization is critical for an expanding SKU base. The situation requires operations to be flexible and scalable to support the changes over time. Warehouse optimization assessment will allow companies to determine better ways to support the existing and future SKUs. Very good. I believe no many words here, no new words. Okay, the next two paragraphs. Uh, Sylvia, will you please help me reading? Okay. For many companies, this will include ways to provide existing material handling equipment or even a reducing of the existing redesign. Redesign? of existing fulfillment operations. This can also identify opportunities for different conventional pa pilot pilots pilot racks and storage or implementation of various level of autom autom automation. automation automation whether it be for high Density, density, storage option or goods to person technologies. Improve processes. Internally, the operation need to support efficient processes such as like uh, assemble or kitting to, re to repackaging and labeling requirements. These processes are critical to supporting the needs, the needs 
of other departments as well as uh, meeting customer expect expectations. Incredible. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So it says for many companies, this will include ways to reprofile. What is reprofile? Okay, reperfilar. So, existing material handling equipment or even a uh, redesign. What is redesign? Rediseñar. Rediseñar, very good. Of the existing fulfillment operations. This can also identify opportunities for different conventional pilot racks. What is a pilot rack? No son las que sirven para subir las paletas. Very good. Ajá, es como donde va ordenado. Estante y todo. And storage. Or implementation of various levels of automation, whether it be for high density storage uh, options or goods to person technology. Improve processes internally. The operations need to support efficient processes such as light assembly or kitting. What is light assembly? It's an ensamblaje ligero. Very good, ensamblaje liviano. Nice. Or kidding. To repackaging and labeling of requirements. This process is critical to supporting the needs of other departments as well as meeting customer expectations. And the last one, this part is going to be for. See, yes, teacher. These processes, if not done appropriately, 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 will be, appropriately, will become costly for our labor perspective as well as consume, consume more space than needed. Not to mention creating boldness and potential drive, potentially driving up the number of touch point. An assessment will ident identify, identify, identify opportunities for warehouse process optimization, improvements, and efficiencies. Very good, perfect. So, uh he says this process is not done properly and will become costly from a labor perspective as well as consume more space than needed. Not to mention creating bottlenecks and potentially driving up the number of touch points. An assessment will identify opportunities for warehouse process optimization, improvements, and efficiencies. Very good. Perfect. Nice. Uh, do you have any questions so far? Good. Okay, uh, we're going to make a little pause here and we're going to do group work. It's going to be very easy, I guess. What we're going to do is to research how you can, how anybody can import and export products uh, to El Salvador. What are the procedures? ¿Cuáles son los procedimientos? En aduana o qué papeleo se necesita para importar o exportar Cualquier product. Of course, you are going to research and then tell in English what is the process. You can do it in different ways. I mean, by plane, by boat, by car, uh, different things that we have to do. Como cuáles son los procesos. Y puede ser por aire, por tierra, por mar, whatever you want to choose. Solo uno de esos. Datos. Okay. Uh, any questions with the exercise? All right. Ser cualquier tipo de producto, eh, teacher. En general, puede escoger un producto o un tipo de producto usted, porque no es lo mismo para todos los productos. Pero, por ejemplo, medicina es bien complejo. Eh, juguetes, uh, armas, whatever you want to check, okay? Okay. 
Let's work into that.
Hello, so you are alone? Hello, teacher. Eh, ¿Sí está trabajando todo bien aquí? No. Ok, la voy a cambiar de room. Ok.
We are ready, teacher. Nice. So let's wait for everybody to come back and then we're going to check. Okay. Okay, so let's check it out. Uh, the first group is Jonathan, Ramiro, Sandra, and Veronica. Yes, teacher, we are ready. Uh, we share my screen right now. Okay. Uh, we talking about the how import anyway any product. Uh, for this, is necessary have. Or do it five phases to get the starter. It's no is a, a specific product. Is the how do it the importation? Okay. okay. Uh, what should we take into account? Uh, the, Me pueden ver pueden ver la pantalla, sí? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes, Ramiro. Oh, sí, ¿verdad? <laughs> uh, what should we take into account before importing product, any product? The world is currently a globalized market, and if it's necessary for our company to import a product, we must take into account that our ideal, ideal supplier can be an any country. Whether nearby or not, therefore, carried out an import is going to be a strategic decision, and we must know well the step prior to how, how to import product. Okay. First, all is necessary. Okay. We have to do a market survey to find the right supplier. We can do a general search on the uh, internet for example, to get an idea of where those who manufacture or fabric what uh, we want to import an air. The follow uh, our classmate Sandra, the uh, tell the first phase and second phase, uh, second phase uh, stage uh, for import okay. products. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Ramiro. First phase selects the provider. It shall be not noted that we will have to decide by an effort to selecting a supply, and we shall not choose the first one we believe as the product we want to import. For this reason, is it is advised advisable to ask for samples and check if what they offer Australia means all the expectation of what we need. Second stage, commercial negotiation of the portions and sell. On the supplier as being identified and is solidary as we verify, we will be in the commercial negotiation. Okay, now, uh, classmate Veronica, thank you, Sandra. The talking about the third phase and fourth phase. You can see Veronica? 
Yes, yes, and can see I had a one probably a a minute. Uh, Oh, perdí el zoom, sorry, pero ya lo voy a encontrar. Déjame unos okay. minutos. Uh -huh. In the screen, we have uh, uh, the presentation, Veronica. You can see now. Uh, no, she oh. lost the software, the Zoom. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Ah, ok, ok, excuse me. My Zoom. Oh. <laughs> yes, I know. Ah, uh, the sack. No, Ramiro, maybe you can help me. Okay, it. no problem. I am uh, talking uh, about the third phase. It's very important finance the import. Import a product implies what we must have in financial solvency, essentially to be able to pay the amount of the purchase product, custom taxes, transportation to our country, and logistical service. Uh, and for preface is a, a document documentation documentation of the imported product. To the import a producer, the buyer will need the supplier to provide him with the following documents: the invoice, the commercial invoice that the suppliers must issue, and the packing list of the product. Now, uh, Jonathan, uh, we're talking uh, the, f the fifth phase. Yes, thank you, Romero. Uh, good evening. Uh, the fifth phase uh, is about transport and documentation. Uh, depending on the INCO term chosen, buyer and seller will have to deal with different phases of the logistic chain, loading at origin and internal transport to the point where the main transport transport is going to begin, which can be boat, plane, train, or truck, loading of merchandise and main tra transportation by land, sea, or air, and unloading at the port, airport, or land terminal of arrival, and final transportation to the importer facilities. A document in which the supplier indicates the type of merchan merchandise sent to the importer, the quantity, weight, or volume, etc. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Very good, perfect. Thank you very much to the first group. The second group is... Uh... Juan, Roberto, Maria Julia, Monica, and Oscar. Okay. okay, vamos a compartir un poquito aquí. Okay, and uh, the process for the uh, importation the United States and uh, equipment uh, in the farm for the farm obligation of the importer before duty and after dispatch. What is a uh, custom clearance? The custom custom uh, clearance would both a set to act and formally is necessary to subject the goods to a customer re regime. It's behind with the acceptance of the custom declaration and concludes with the release of the same before custom obligation of the porter before dispatch the clearance must re register in the register of importer 
hit a curing of re, uh, record, hit formal a curing, and have it available to the customer authority. Importers who are not required to keep a coding must keep a special record. Record using a uh, service of the custom custom agent or of representative complete with the not traffic regulation of restrict restrictions. Kill permit for the example of the, the is equipment not necessary uh, permission for sample health. It is uh, always necessary prior, priority to custom clearance of the merchandise. For example, in the building loading is the uh, shipment in the the maritime. For example, in the building loading is import for the export and merchandise is the declaring in the, the the building loading the uh, invoice uh, go to the shipping in in pass to the border the required is uh, sorry is plc for example and Maria Julia helped me tell me the documents necessary for the import. Uh, it's a, a document is a, a import, uh, for example, the match, ma, ma, a machinery for the for the pro, pro, for the product is a it is a uh, have a benefit for imported ma ma machinery is uh, a is necessary is um the communication the uh, the the Q the quota um the quota the quota for the equipment for the supplier is the condition the negotiation um, of the negotiation are the review the the supplier send the the send the, the, send the uh, pro forma invoice this this include uh, this is a uh, invoice include the uh, uh, the cost the transportation uh, the in, insure uh, the other costs uh, the other costs included in in, in importation is a uh, uh, the formula is a bill uh, a bill of lading is a document de con eh, en español conocimiento de embarque eh, yes. The, the six the six uh, papers necessary is a product for quotation performance invoice yeah uh, cargo, car, charger manifest Manifest. yes uh, certificate yeah. origin documents for the tax payment and freight and transportation yeah, uh, and finally, is is a policy. Yes. Policy de de aduanas in El Salvador. Yes. Finish. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you very much. It was very interesting and. Um,
it's very interesting, you know, sometimes I give you the same topic, but uh, you bring something different. So that is very interesting because we learn in different point of view, uh, the same procedure. So, and this is something that some people, they don't know how to do. Uh, so it's interesting understanding this part. All right, my friends, this was the class for tonight. So remember to continue in the platform and let's check the attendance. Uh, Aida Isabel Lopez Bonilla. Ana Verónica Hernández Rodríguez. Present. Good. Blanca Isabel Tunaca de Rodríguez. Ernesto José Andrade Medina. Jonathan Ariel eh, Figueroa Rivera. Present. Good. José Alfredo Hueso López. Present, teacher. Present. Good. Juan Roberto Velázquez Romero. Present. Good. María Julia Ramos Olivar. Present. Good. Uh, Mónica Wendy Ábalos Girón. Oscar Mauricio Rivera González. Oscar René Molina Calidonio. Present teacher. Good. Osea Figueroa Cisneros. Ramiro Rafael Aguilar Díaz. Present teacher. Good. Roberto Carlos Avilés Rivera. Sandra Yanira Gómez Romero. Present teacher. Good. Silvia Patricia Aceituno Méndez. And Veronica Elizabeth Burgos Rivas. Present, present teacher. Good. So, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. Have a very good night. Rest very well. See you tomorrow and dream in English. See you. See you. Okay, see you tomorrow, everybody. See you tomorrow. Hello. Hello, can you hear me?